if you want to know what it's like to acclimate to dentures, here's what you do. Go grab a jar of peanut butter, take off the lid, and stick it in your mouth. Now hold it there while you talk to people and eat your lunch. It's like that, only with sores all over your gums. Now, I have it on good authority that most people eventually get used to it and carry on like they did when they still had teeth, but I've talked to enough people now to know that some folks also don't. Right? Some people wear them only at work or when they're in public or when they have to, and they learn to eat with their gums, and they just get used to sounding kind of funny when they talk. And given that I talk for a living, that knowledge scared the hell out of me. There was a point a few days after I got my teeth evicted where I wondered if I was going to have to start looking for another job. Now, if you follow me on Facebook, you saw all of this playing out in real time. A lot of people who wear dentures are embarrassed to admit it, and a lot of people who have trouble with them are embarrassed to admit that they're getting their asses kicked by something that their grandma managed to get through, but I'm an open book. The whole point of crafting the No Illusions persona was so that I could be completely honest with you, so I publicly documented the entire ordeal in a series of long and admittedly self-pitying Facebook posts. And I'm really glad I did because my friends on Facebook were the main resource I used to get through the anxiety that was otherwise crippling me through those first couple of weeks. See, I'm really lucky in that regard. Between fans of the show, the online atheist communities that I'm a part of, my real life friends and my family, I've got a really robust social support network. So in addition to business partners that were perfectly okay with me easing myself back into work over a month long period, I had a ton of emotional support when I was shrouded in depression. I had so many people trying to help me from so many different directions that one of them was bound to get through. Hell, it's the same reason I was able to quit smoking. It was because of you. And the whole time I'm basking in all the encouragement and sympathy, I kept thinking about what a fucking demon you would have to be to take that away from someone. See, like, like a lot of introverted atheists, I never really had a social support network before. I, I never went to church. I've never belonged to a club I'm not particularly close to anybody in my family. I've always had friends, but, you know, not of the share our problems and be vulnerable with one another variety. So when I heard about churches that ostracize members and encourage people to shun their own family, I knew it was a terrible thing to do, but I didn't recognize how terrible. You know those studies you see from time to time that show how religious people live longer than non-religious people? Yeah, this is why. When you just look at religious people who don't regularly attend a church, you see that difference disappear. You're just like it does when you compare churchgoers with atheists who belong to groups that meet regularly. Now, religious people trot that statistic out all the time as though it supports their faith somehow. But what it really tells you is that when you withdraw support from apostates, you're taking years off their lives. Right? Like the weaponization of the social support network has deadly consequences. Still, though, it, it's something that religions are better at than us. I mean, I, I get why newly minted atheists are leery of anything that remotely smells like a church. And at a certain point, any group that meets regularly might start smelling like a church. And I also get why introverts are hesitant to put themselves through the anxiety of trying to join a club or go to a weekly meeting of any kind. But you still owe it to yourself to try. Maybe you're like me and you never had a social support network, so you think you're fine without one. Maybe you had one ripped away from you by some heartless tenant of your former faith and don't want to leave yourself vulnerable to that again, but you still owe it to yourself. And if that's not enough to convince you, think of all the people that might need you. You could be the reason that somebody smiles for the first time in days. You could be the reason somebody realizes that they can too carry on. You can be the reason somebody gets out of bed in the morning and tries again. Hell, some of you are already that reason for me and you probably don't even know it. The biggest failing of the atheist community is in its inclusivity. Our charge, and, and by our, I mean Heath, Eli, Lucinda, and myself, is to create that community, right? That was the whole point of starting the show. And I think that by and large, we've succeeded in it. But our success is proportional to the number of people who can benefit from that community, right? Like if nobody gets the advantage but me, it's a miserable fucking failure. Look, I get it. People are assholes. Right? The internal politics of any club get to be a pain in the ass eventually. Social gatherings can be stressful as hell. Obligations to other people are our burden by definition. And maybe you think you don't need them. Maybe you think you're fine on your own. And maybe you're even right. But even if you don't need the community, the community might still need you. And if it turns out you were wrong and you actually do need a community to support you, it'll be too late to find one. 